break. Hey guys, I'm Sarah. We are back for another episode, episode two. And this was inspired directly by episode one. We are literally doing this minutes after episode one <laughs> ended. Because we kept talking yeah. about um, ADHD, actually, and mm-hmm. our experience with it. So I decided to hit the record button. So that's what we're doing. So um, Lori, do you want to talk about what you were just saying about schedules and stuff? Yeah, I was just saying that, you know, there's there's... With ADHD as an adult, it's an entirely different experience, I think. Um, And scheduling, I noticed that lately, especially during this quarantine time, and I know probably a lot of people are experiencing this same type of routine thing, um, that I do the same thing every single day in quarantine. I start out in the morning, I get up at 7.30, I go into the bathroom, I take a shower, I sanitize the bathroom with the Lysol spray, I go into my room, I make my bed, I sanitize my room with the Lysol spray. I give my kids the Lysol spray, they sanitize their rooms. I come downstairs and I wash the, I put the dirty dishes into the dishwasher, I unload the dishwasher of the clean dishes. And this morning, I just realized and became very conscious of the fact that at 9.02, every single morning, I am loading the dishwasher. It's amazing. And, (laughs) And I cannot tell you how angry that made me. That I was this person who had somehow gotten into this really foul mood because of a routine that I've had for me. I was so unnerved that I almost got mad about it. It was like I just I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm failing myself here because this is not me at all. And then I started feeling trapped and I started mm-hmm. feeling like I, I, I was breathing heavy and I thought yeah. to myself, I have to change this routine. Yeah. I can't just keep doing it this way at 9 or 2 every day loading the dishwasher. Yep. I, and there's something about... Like, I don't know if it's, like, I know it's a part of ADHD, this, like, routine thing, mm-hmm. but it's, like, we need it so much. Maybe even more than most people, mm-hmm. but it's the one thing that most of us hate. Mm-hmm. Like, thinking about a schedule, it just, it makes me angry. It, it does. It, <laughs> it frustrates makes me, mad. me. Yeah, it makes me mad. It makes me feel like my life's being controlled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. I mean, I have a, a, a total um, just abhorrence of feeling fenced in and tied down and I just can't and even and sometimes I'm paranoid about it sometimes you know if if I'm leaving out to go outside or I'm going to the store and you know my husband says to me uh where are you going it makes me mad oh, yeah what difference does it make why do you, you care <laughs> why do you care I'm going to the store damn it you know I mean it, it it shouldn't matter but for some reason I feel so hemmed in by the fact that I have to be conscious of my moments Mm-hmm. And then it's the dichotomy of that, though. So meditation puts you in a moment. And I'm totally comfortable with that. I'm mm-hmm. totally comfortable with when I'm in my meditation, when I'm exercising my mindfulness, that moment is mine. Because you're in control. Because I'm in control. Yeah. Exactly. Hun- yeah. Oh, my God. I am yeah. not in control of the 902 um, putting the dishes in the dishwasher. Because mm-hmm. it just has to happen. Because do you think it's worse when other people depend on you for something? As oh, part absolutely. of the schedule. Because that's something I realized recently, too, is, like, when other people depend on me, I'm least likely to want to do it. Which oh, is sure. so odd. It's so odd. There's a pressure to that. Yeah. there, there It makes your choices pressure field. Like there's, a, there's a cause and effect. Whereas you understand that when it's your choice, that the only thing it's going to affect is you. Yes. But when it's not your choice, it's going to affect so many other people or so many other things or so many other events. And that is a lot of pressure for an ADHD person. Even if it's something as easy as doing the dish or like putting the dishes in the dishwasher exactly. or unloading them. It's like, it, and it may not make sense mm-hmm. to a lot of people, but it's like, it feels like a physical reaction mm-hmm. because um, actually ADHD is hyperactive. Um, oh my God. Yeah, attention. Yeah, attention, attention hyperactivity <laughs> disorder. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but in it for adults, actually I just, learn this not to go off on a tangent is that ADHD and ADD a lot of people use interchangeably Mm -hmm. and they are the same thing but it wasn't until recently that I think the last five years or so because more and more research has been done especially with adult ADHD that they actually no longer use ADD but they switched to ADHD in the DSM-5 and that's where like all the diagnostic Mm -hmm. criteria is but they actually switched the wording of it even Mm -hmm. though I don't really fully understand why because to me ADD would more describe 
more of what we have because right. we don't have the hyperactive right. ADHD. But maybe is, hyperactive being not looking at hyperactive as such of a physical yeah. manifestation, hyperactivity of the mind. Yeah. Like, I, oh, always, yeah. I always say it's like, and I know you guys have probably heard this before, it's like a remote that won't stop switching channels. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's just constant changing channels like I do when I flip through mm-hmm. Hulu. Yeah. And oh, no, I drive Carson crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Carson's my husband, by the way. Yeah, I drive him nuts. In the radio. Mm-hmm. I oh. always think of it like the radio, like... Um, that's a perfect metaphor for the mm-hmm. way our brains work. It's kind of like you find a station, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, you maybe listen to it for a minute and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm bored of this. You find something new. And sometimes it comes in static key, but mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I really like this song. And then you get really annoyed and then you turn it. <laughs> and then you eventually keep getting back to the same things and just turning and turning. And turning. <laughs> I know it drives, it drives people crazy. Um, I used to, in college, it's funny you should say that because in college, my friend Sandy, she used to call me Tidbit Lori. Oh, my God. Because I would only listen to little tidbits of songs, and that would flip the channel. Flip the channel. And, and so I was, tid- oh, here yeah. comes Tidbit Lori. We're getting mm-hmm. in the car with Tidbit Lori. We're never going to listen yeah. to a complete song again. We'd be such good DJs. Oh, yeah. Because they usually end the song before it's uh-huh. over anyway, and we could just fade into the new one. It's, I mean, I, you bring the, it's, it's, I was just thinking about, is there ever a song that I could listen to over and over without, without changing the channel or without moving to the Ooh. next song? Or is there an album that I can listen to all the way through without flipping a channel or a station on That's like a Amazon question. Music? Yeah. I love Amazon Music because yeah. they have dumb stations like Yacht Rock. What is your- Yacht Rock? <laughs> what is oh, that? man. <laughs> Yacht Rock is the best. I discovered it this weekend because it was every dumb song that I like. It was everything from Steely Dan to like George Benson to um, like 90s R&B to oh. I guess it's stuff you'd play on a yacht. Play on a yacht? Yeah, oh, I guess. I would be on that yacht. I would be on I that could, yacht. I could just picture like this like the image I had in my head is very like early 90s mm-hmm. like Boss like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like uh, Boss Skag Steely Dan yeah. they'll do like the 70s thing and they don't do much 80s because I don't think people had yachts in the 80s I don't know. Maybe they didn't have yachts in the 80s. I don't know. I don't know. But there's not a lot of 80s on that channel. But check it out, guys. Yacht Rock. Yacht if you Rock. go to If you go to Amazon Music, type in Yacht Rock, Y-A-C-H-T, and you will find it. And it is a glorious station because for somebody like me, people like me, you know, I listen to the whole station and I don't, I, I listened to it until there was no more left and it started to. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I had to make my own. Yeah. Like. Actually, our wedding playlist, mm-hmm. it has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. of songs because I spent a good year putting together all my favorite songs. And a lot of those songs aren't weren't even in our wedding. I just wanted all my favorite songs to be in the same mm-hmm. place. So I'll just listen to that. And I'm like, there's mm-hmm. 1950s music. There is like really awful hip hop, like mm-hmm. bad hip hop <laughs> right next to like the Lumineers yeah. and... See, Aretha folks, Franklin. This is, this is how we do. This is how yeah. we do. We started out talking about ADHD, and this is how the ADHD into music. This welcome, is what we do. welcome to our brain. And yes. some days are worse than others. Yep. I was actually telling Lori that this month's been really hard for me, mm-hmm. because I feel like my attention and focus has been not that great. Mm-hmm. Especially for some reason this month, I think I've just been stuck inside more because it's so humid in New England mm-hmm. right now. It's it's bad. It's gross. Yeah. It, it's. This is, I feel like this is the worst it's ever been. Yeah, I'm in hell right now. It's yeah, it, it, this is bad. And I li- actually, I lived down south, too, mm-hmm. for a while. And I never experienced this. It's just the air it's- here. Is- anyway, so, see, tangent, but... Trash. Yeah. What was I talking about? <laughs> it, it is. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, my focus has been really bad. And then add to yeah. that, I think, add to the whole issue of, of ADHD. Being an ADHD and then being an empath. Oh, God, yeah. It's just excruciating it, yeah. it really is and you you're because you got your own vibe going on you've got your own energy frenetic energy going on and then add to that somebody else's other energy, people sucking in other people's energy it is it is so hard and so frustrating sometimes yeah. and i think it's why we don't like crowds yeah i i 100 agree and if you didn't know what an empath was it's when basically when you're very sensitive to mm-hmm. other people other people's energy. And I know a lot of people, like my husband would be like, oh my God, who would roll his eyes if I kept saying energy? But it's like- My other husband pe- calls it the woo. The woo, yeah. Like, in 
like other people's vibes. We're just highly sensitive people to that. And I don't know if it has to do with ADHD. It's who we are as people. We're very um, caregiver type mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. So um, I think just some people are more sensitive to it. We're born that way. Um, and it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Yay to you, ADHD empaths. Woo! Introverts. We call ourselves yeah. ADHD empath introverts. How about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the best. And there's so many, like, it's such a blanket term, too, because there's so many different kinds. Mm-hmm. Like, I've met adults who have the hyperactive kind, and I'm like, please stay away from me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you are too much. Please yes. get away from me. Because it almost looks like, and I don't like diagnosing people, and I, I don't know what else to use other than mania. It's almost like a mania yeah. where they're so fidgety, where they, like, move things. And, oh, yeah, manic. You know, yeah. I do that when I'm alone, mm-hmm. but, like, when I'm around people, I'm actually pretty reserved. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't realize that I have ADD, which is hilarious to me because inside my brain, it's mm-hmm. very different. I think um, some people are better at holding in, and, and that's yeah. where that hyperactive piece comes yeah. in. Hyperactive doesn't just have to be physical. It can mm-hmm. be, like, that the mental, social, emotional yeah. kind of thing, which creates all the different types of ADHD, yeah. all the yeah. different personalities that manifest from it. We develop what we can cope with. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And I keep saying 100%, can't. but I agree with you. <laughs> so, well, that's good. because I'm driving say, myself crazy about it. it. I'm waiting for you to say like 70%. 70. Maybe 50. <laughs> yeah, because um, actually I wanted to mention this book. I brought it up on my phone because um, I couldn't remember the author, but it's a book that my therapist recommended I read and very rarely can I sit and read a whole book anymore. Um, and I sat and read it twice in like a mm-hmm. week and a half, almost two weeks. It's called Driven to Distraction. Um, there's a revised version because the original one, I think it was in 92. I think that's when it was first written. When there wasn't much about it. Um, there wasn't many people who knew about it. And it's by Edward Hallowell and John Rately. And it's one of the best books I've ever read. And what I like is because they tell a lot of stories um, about different patients that he's had in the different types of ADD hyperactive, non-hyperactive. Most of it is about adults, but they will talk about children um, because it does manifest different in Mm -hmm. children. But non-hyperactive in children would be more like the kids who sat in class and daydreamed Mm -hmm. um, instead of the ones who are disruptive and can't keep their mouths shut. Definitely not me. Mm -hmm. I was painfully shy, but I was the one who couldn't help myself but look out the window and then fall asleep because I couldn't afford Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or just got up and left classrooms. And I was just like, bye. <laughs> Can't do it. But it's fast. It's a wonderful book. Um, I highly recommend you read it, Laura. I, I think you actually to. like I'm going to write it down. I'm yeah, it's, it to me. it's fantastic. And then that actually got me to look into more people. There's actually a YouTube channel. I'll put that link below. I forget her name. I recently came across it where she has ADD herself. Mm-hmm. And this channel is amazing. She goes through all this stuff. Um, all this she talks to doctors on it and different interviews and she talks about her struggles with it it's mm-hmm. and the great. more you know really the mo- the more you know about your about this uh, condition about ADHD the better off you are the more armed you are to be able mm-hmm. to to make it constructive for you because it's there so as an adult you you can learn to use it to your advantage yep yeah it's like a what we're talking it's like a super Mm-hmm. It is a superpower, absolutely. I mean, it keeps me moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, when you and one thing about a person with ADHD is they don't let roadblocks stand in their way. No, they <laughs> they usually either run through them or take a jackhammer to them. So it, it yeah, it, it it propels you forward. It really it really really does. And I think you know with with all the tools that there are out there right now, I know for me, you know, kind of struggling you know to understand ADHD. Uh, one of the things that really has helped me the most is meditation. Mm-hmm. I think that's why it's so important to me is is that it's it's just helped me so it's so much so mm-hmm. so very much. Yeah, and um, two, we never really talked about like it's a neurological disorder. Mm-hmm. It's actually like a physical disorder, mm-hmm. which I don't think a lot of people realize. Like I think a lot of people think that it's something that we can just control. Yeah. And when I kind of learned that, I was just like, oh, thank God. And it is diagnosed. It, yeah, I know, I, you know, I taught special ed for a while, for, for a good long while. And I know that with ADHD, that was something that we were not, we couldn't diagnose. Yeah. You had to go to a doctor for yeah. it because it was a neurological situation. So we as special ed educator, educators didn't have a, um, any type of uh, uh, scale mm-hmm. or inventory to be able to do for ADHD because it's neurological. And because it has become more common over the years, I think a lot of people just 
put that label mm-hmm. on it. Like, oh, that kid's just ADD. Right. And it actually is harmful when you do that because it could be something else or it could be ADHD, which is kind of common. Mm-hmm. However, um, definitely if you think that a loved one or your child or somebody else has it, go see a doctor because there's so many tools and different things mm-hmm. you can do with it. And self-diagnosing, you know, sometimes you can. But something like this, it's worth having a team to help you. And that doesn't mean that, you know, we're advocating medication. No, I no. I feel neither here nor there about medication. Yeah, I I'm think the same. that, you know, if, if you are going to medicate, then your whole entire lifestyle has to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there are times when, when it's warranted and times when it isn't. So mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things that is an option becomes an option for you if you go see a doctor. Yeah. So it's see and, your and, options. Yeah. Sure. Talk to more than a doctor. All your options. Yeah. Get a second opinion even. <laughs> and figure out how, like, I think therapy is great. I, I would, honest to God, go to therapy every week if I can afford it. Oh, I'm the same I way. I think that, that for, especially for people with ADHD, a, a good therapist who can teach them how to roll with the ADHD symptoms rather than mask them mm-hmm. is extremely important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for them to understand it, mm-hmm. and because, like, the wonderful thing about people with it is we're so good at coming up with ideas. Mm-hmm. We're, like, our the way our brains work, we're very imaginative and creative. Whether you're an artist or not, it's more like we can see, we see a situation in front of us, mm-hmm. and we can literally see... A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We can see all the paths around it mm-hmm. and through it. And it's that's amazing. I it's, think that's so fascinating. We don't work We don't work step by step. We see the whole picture. Yeah. Which in a lot of cases can be really overwhelming. Yeah. But like you said, we can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. And, and put it into steps. But we're seeing the entire picture. We can't just go, okay, step one's going to be this. And then let's see what happens at step two. Yeah. And then move It's there. like going to read the directions mm-hmm. and we go from A to Z. Yes. <laughs> or A to D. And then... Mm-hmm. You know, Carson will say, like, didn't you read the directions? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I just didn't follow two of the steps. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's, I find it, the more I, it's not new to me. I was actually diagnosed when, uh, around 16, actually, but I had other health issues going on, so it was never really addressed, which was no fault to anybody. It just, but I was at the time on um, Ritalin. I took Ritalin, mm-hmm. and it helped me pass high school at the time, but I haven't been on anything mm-hmm. since then. It was really difficult for me because I I couldn't be still long enough to take the test to show to show that I had ADHD. Yeah, you know it was really hard, and and I it was adult onset definitely. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you, it happened after I had my first child. I was just about to ask you that if it happened after it you happened had your after child. I had my first child. I had a really traumatic birth. Um, he was he was born. He had the cord wrapped around his neck, and it was an emergency C section. So I was asleep through the whole thing, oh um, and it was almost like when I when I woke up, everything changed. Like the grass, our colors were different. Grass was greener, sky was bluer. Like there was this intense response to because I I stopped breathing several times on when oh I was God. having DJ, and I feel like that really brought a lot of sun. It, it wasn't there until I had my first child wow. it really it was very very strange and it, it's it stuck with me and it's there and it's been diagnosed now and that door opened here never we are closed. <laughs> here we are they say where one door opens or, or mm-hmm. one door closes a window opens or something well some, I, I think like several weird windows opened at that point you know and uh yeah so you saw the light I welcome see. to the club yeah exactly it's a it's fascinating here. world to live in and mm-hmm. the more you learn the more you the more you learn about it, especially if you have it as an adult, or if your kid has anybody, the more you learn about yourself, mm-hmm. and the more you're able to focus on your strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always good to keep learning about yourself, I feel. Like, when I learned, like, for so long, I think, especially running a business, the thing I struggle with the most is thinking I need to do everything, mm-hmm. and really being okay with my weaknesses, and, like, really embracing them, and I realize I'm not good at a few things and I need to focus on the things I was good at, mm-hmm. which is coming up with ideas. Absolutely. And like organizing things, being creative and why I got burnt out is because I tried to convince myself that I can which I can do a lot of stuff, but that I could do it all. Right. And especially with 
my brain, mm-hmm. it just, it doesn't work. And that's what happens, too, I think, with that whole idea of seeing the big picture. When you see the big picture, there are several different pieces of that picture. And it can get overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to really focus and say, I can have somebody help me with that. I'm the worst at um, delegating. Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> Not saying that you are, but I, mean, I agree. At, I, no, say that I am. Because I am. <laughs> And I mean, when I get people who come, I, I get volunteers a lot at my, at my job. I get a lot of volunteers who come into work, and um, it is really difficult. But they end up spending the day doing basically nothing because I can't delegate. Hmm. I feel like everything has to be done by me. And it's not that if you want something done, you need to you do, do it, it yourself. yourself. It's really not that. It is uh-huh. this fear of letting go of all the things that I have to do because when I let it go, that part of me, I feel like that part of me goes with it. Yeah. Oh. It's a really weird kind of situation to be in, so I'm terrible at delegating. I just don't do it well, and I would prefer that nobody ever volunteer. <laughs> I'm the same. Way. You know, don't ever volunteer. Yeah, it's almost. Do you do you struggle with getting the right words out? Because I resonate when you said you were like fearful mm-hmm. of it. Because sometimes um, I feel like I can't explain things good mm-hmm. enough for somebody to understand because my brain works in a very particular way so I struggle with explaining it in a way so they get it I know how I do it yeah and how I do it is not always the way it's kind of unconventional usually and I I, in my ADHD way me explaining it to somebody else doesn't make sense to them yes and I think it's happened to me enough where it almost makes me fearful of it which is something I need to work on. So yeah. I think I don't appreciate volunteers. volunteers yeah, oh yeah. But Thank you. It's, I'm the worst at u- utilizing your volunteership yeah. of anyone ever. So. <laughs> oh my god. So there you go, guys. Yeah. There's the, that's our that's, talk about that. The struggle is real. ADHD moms, ADHD empathic introverts, whoever yeah, you are you've out got there. This. We feel you. We got you. We get it. You're not crazy. Mm-mm, you're not. Um, it's normal. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to learn to deal with it. And if you can, you know, there's plenty of people out there that you can talk to. And there's a ton of free resources out there, too, for you to learn about yourself. And how, like, asking yourself questions like, how do you learn best? Where do you thrive? What type of environments do you work the best around? Just to kind of, like, you know, why struggle if you don't have to? Be the superhero that you are. Ooh, good one. Mm-hmm. We're going to end on that. I need a t-shirt All right. that says that. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys are well. And if you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe below. See you soon. Bye.